go ahead and remove your factory air intake tube from your throttle body to your air box. Your particular model will probably have one clamp right here. You want to go ahead and loosen that. If yours has a clamp on the back side over here, you want to go ahead and loosen that one as well. Then you can go ahead and pull the intake tube off. Now on the bottom side of it, there'll be a sensor. That is your air intake temp sensor. Pull down on the little red clip, pinch the tab, and pull that connector off. If your vehicle has this hose here, go ahead and remove that. Go ahead and remove your entire intake tube. This one here will stay in place, but you'll be able to remove your entire intake tube from the vehicle and set that aside. On the back of the intake, there is a big block of foam and there are two clips holding this in place. We're just gonna use our body trim tool, get on in there pop those clips out. Go ahead and push that foam back. This foam will come out at a later time. We're gonna disconnect our wiring harness from our map sensor here. Pinch down on this connector, wiggle that off. Once that pops off, you wanna go ahead and use your trim tool or body tool here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and pop some of these clips off that secure this to the intake. be a series of these. There's a little clip down underneath the throttle body right here. Pop that little clip off there. And then there is a connector right at the base over here. I want to go ahead and remove that as well. And once you remove that red safety clip, pull that back a little bit, press down on the tab, wiggle this free. And go ahead and pull this harness aside. I'm going to go ahead and remove this hose here. I'm just going to grab it, just gently break it free. Once that's loose, go ahead and use your pliers to gently wiggle that off. On this back bracket right here, go ahead and use your trim tool Pop the harness off of that. Well, that's actually your vacuum tubes. I'm gonna pull that aside. On the driver's side rear, you're gonna find two 10 millimeter nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these here. On the front side by the throttle body, you're gonna find two more 10 millimeter nuts. Remove these. On the front side of the intake, right behind the throttle body, there are these two uh, vacuum ports right here. I wanna go ahead and remove these. And just use your pliers to gently loosen those and then twist them and pull them away. I'm going to go ahead and remove this thicker vacuum line from the intake. Ours is a little bit stuck, so just using a pick to get up underneath just to loosen this a little bit. Now on the side of the intake, these hoses will be popped into these, into these clips. You want to just pop those out. And this one I'm going to pull out from behind or from underneath the alternator harness. Set that aside, pop this one out as well. You know, there's a large bulkhead connector right here. There is a bracket with two 10 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna remove those. On the other side of that bracket, where these coolant tubes are here, there are two 10 millimeter nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. I'm 
once you have these two nuts removed from the coolant quartz here, go ahead and lift that up and that'll free this up a little bit. Now the bulkhead connector right here goes down and there is a clip holding that in place. Go ahead and remove that. There's gonna be seven upper intake bolts we want to remove. There's one here, two, three, we pull these aside. There's a fourth one in the back, right back here. There's a fifth one right here, six and seven. Let's go ahead and remove those. I believe these are capture bolts, so that means they'll be loose, but you can't pull them out. block here. We tried to lift the intake but our screws here are hitting the bracket. So we have two E5 inverted Torx here. There's two studs and there's two on the back side. We could remove the brackets but the brackets are a lot tougher to get to. So it's going to be easy for us to go ahead and just remove these screws. Now we lift our intake and want to pull our studs out of the brackets. So we have to lift up on the intake. There's gonna be hoses and harnesses in the way. Now we went ahead and vacuum out our mouse nest. That's a great little place for those little critters to hang out. Get to remove that. Go ahead and clean up underneath here. Next what we wanna do is disconnect our injector harnesses down underneath. This connectors with little red lock tabs. So you wanna be able to pull up on those lock tabs, pinch and pull that connector off. I'm gonna use a little pick to get underneath. I'm gonna pull up on the red lock tab and then we'll go ahead and remove that. All right, so we have harness retainers right here. I'm go ahead and pop these off here. my pick. I'm going to get to the injector harness. Lift up on the little red tab. Should be able to pinch the connector and pull that harness off. We want to do this for all six injectors. With the right front wheel removed from the vehicle and peeling back the splash guard right here, there were two 10 millimeter nuts on this bracket. One here and one here on the lower part of the valve cover. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those two nuts. I'm gonna go in with a 10 millimeter open end wrench, loosen those nuts. Now this bulkhead connector is attached to the plate that we just loosened. I'm gonna get underneath here and just pop the plastic retaining clip off. This should allow us to go ahead and get underneath here. And I'll move that bracket. The bracket does have little harnesses attached to it. So just use your, your little uh, tool here, your little trim tool to go ahead and pop off the little retainer harnesses. Now these two vacuum ports, one, they keep on popping in the way here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab a zip tie, gonna grab both of these guys, and uh, gonna just tie them off to the side here. And we're gonna go ahead and use a T30 Torx bit and loosen our fuel rails. Now you wanna be super careful. You do not wanna drop anything down those intake ports.
Now what we want to do is we want to pull up on the passenger side fuel rail, get that loose from the injectors, then we're going to go to the driver's side, we're going to pull up that side and we're going to flip the system over. You might have a little bit of residual fuel left in there. Make sure you just have some rags or something underneath the vehicle. Go ahead and work on the driver's side. When you pull us up, you want to watch for the O-rings of your injectors. Pull that system up and just set that off to the side here. And you're probably going to see some of the O-rings. Now I'm just going to go ahead and collect some of the O-rings for your fuel injectors. I'm going to set those aside. And some of the O-rings will be left in your fuel rail. I'm going to go ahead and use a small flathead screwdriver. Go ahead and collect those. So I'm going to go ahead and use 8 millimeter and remove the perimeter bolts. It could be a Torx bit, but we're going to use an 8 mil and remove the bolts around the perimeter of the lower intake next. So on the back side of the intake manifold, there are two bolts. There's one buried in the back underneath here. Back of the intake, there's one more retaining tab for a harness. And there's another connector on the back that is stuck to the back of this intake. And there we go. Now what we did was we went ahead and we cleaned off the, the ports to the heads here and we taped them off so we don't want to have any debris falling down inside there. Next we're going to go ahead and we're going to use our E8 inverted torques and there are five bolts to go ahead and remove the oil cooler from the engine. So we're actually going to start this in a pattern. There is one down in front here just to the left of the oil filter. We have to do that one first. Second, this back one. Third will be this forward one right here. Fourth will be the opposite corner back here, rear passenger side. And then the fifth one will be this one right here. So let's go ahead and loosen those. Fifth and last one will be this one right here. Just gonna go around and double check to make sure these are all loose. These are also capture nuts or capture screws, whatever you wanna call them. On the back side of this unit, there are two connectors. We wanna go ahead and remove those. And there's also uh, a coolant hose on the back side here. So what we're going to do is we could probably go ahead and remove these connectors. I won't be able to get to that back one until the unit is up and out. So let's go ahead and try and lift this unit. Let's see if we can get to that connector on the back side right here. I'm going to pinch and pull that off on that back hose there. There's a hose clamp. We're gonna go ahead and grab a pair of pliers and pull that off. I'm gonna use a pair of coolant crimps here. I'm gonna use our pliers. Go ahead and remove this clamp here. Go ahead and work that hose clamp back. Once we get that back, we should be able to go ahead and remove that hose. And this will limit the amount of coolant coming out of the hose. We're still going to loosen them out of the cooler. Now we're using a siphon here 
to go ahead and get any of the residual coolant and oil out of the bottom valley. Go ahead and clean this up the best you can. At this point here, we can go ahead and use rags and clean up the rest of this here. There is some residual fluid left in the bottom of the valley here. It's not critical to the operation of the engine. We'll do a little bit more cleaning up. What we do want to pay attention to is this port right here. And these other, there's a couple other ports. And then up front here, uh, there's a, a port. And all these are going to have O-rings or gaskets that go on to seal them. So I want to make sure that all those surfaces are clean. And then we'll go ahead and get our oil cooler and get that installed. All right, so here we go. Install your coolant pipe. Get that in a place. Grab the pliers. I'm gonna move that clamp back up. our coolant pliers here. Grab our big bulkhead connector or our connector for the bottom. Line that up. Let's go ahead and install our coolant hose here. These are pliers to go ahead and move that clamp back into position. And once we have that clamped, we can go ahead and release the coolant hose pliers here. Grab our connector. Go ahead and line this up. Snap that on. Line this unit up. Press that on. Press the red clip on. Let's go ahead and lower this down into position. There's a rubber port or hose port in the front. I want to go ahead and work that down into the into the valley. Once that's down in a place, the other bolt should pretty much line right up. So let's go ahead and start to snug those up one by one. Now that these are snug down in a place, let's go ahead and torque them down to 106 inch pounds. 106 inch pounds. On the lower part of the intake, each port has a gasket. I'm going to use a small pick, remove these gaskets. I'm going to go ahead and clean the bottom side. I'm just using the rounded side of my pick just to go around inside these grooves. 
to get out any any bit of debris that might be causing an issue. Take your replacement seals, line those up, get those pressed down into place. Anytime you do this here, it's always best to replace the gaskets. It is definitely cheap insurance, making sure that everything's sealed up properly. Let's go ahead and flip the intake and we'll do the same for the top. Let's go ahead and lower our intake, our lower intake, down into place. Go ahead and start threading in our lower intake bolts. We'll do this right around the whole perimeter. Once we get all these bolts started, we're going to go ahead and snug them down and we'll come on back and torque them. I'm gonna go ahead and torque our lower intake manifold, starting with number one. We're torquing this to 106 inch pounds. Come back to the rear one here. Number three, passenger side in the middle. Number four is the rearward. Our next one. And then our last one is our forward mounted one right here. On the back of your lower intake, you want to go ahead and reconnect your harnesses. get those put in a place. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and install my O-rings on my fuel injectors right now. Do this for all six. Now I'm gonna go ahead and line up our fuel rails here. Line these up with the O-rings. You can press the fuel rails down right on top of the O-rings. And we'll go ahead and get those four screws started to hold that in place. And we're gonna go ahead and snug those down. So the fuel rails, we're just gonna snug those down. You'll feel them bottom out. And then you just a little bit more. Do this for all four.
Now I'm going to go ahead and install our fuel injector harnesses. You want to simply press it down. You'll hear it click and then press that lock tab down in place. Repeat for all six. Now we'll install our retainers here. I'm going to go ahead and install. There we go. Just like that. On the bottom side of your upper intake, you just want to make sure that the intake is clean. Do this for all six ports. Let's go ahead and lower our intake down into place. We want to make sure we get our studs lined up and into the brackets. We have that two sets on the driver's side. I'm gonna go ahead and work that intake down and into place. And check around the back side. Make sure there's nothing causing an issue. I want to go ahead and snug down those intake bolts. Take bolts to 89 inch pounds. We'll go to our back one here. Go ahead and get your plastic hoses hooked up to the intake here. Line up your vacuum port right here. Work that on and snap these in. And then you have your other port right here. This is gonna hook up to your air intake tube. here. And then we have our retainer right here. I'm going to press this back down into its clip right there. You can go ahead and finagle the foam block back into the back of the intake area. Take your plastic push pins line those right up and they should go right into that bracket right here. We'll install our two 10 millimeter nuts on the back bracket here. And then we're going to move to the front part right up front beside the throttle body. We'll install the two 10 millimeter nuts over there. Go ahead and snug those down. Just want these snug. I'm gonna go ahead and grab our vacuum hose here and press this mounting clip in. There's a hose right up top that presses right onto the side. We have our harness here. Get that connector pressed in. Go ahead and connect your map sensor. 
install your retainers. And then we'll go ahead and install these two connectors. I just want to pull this up and out of the way. that in a place, get the retainer on, and then we have our air temp sensor that plugs into the bottom side of your intake tube. Clip that on, press the lock on. At this point we can go ahead and get our air intake tube lined up. Go ahead and remember to feed your vacuum tube underneath the alternator wiring and connect that to your air, in air intake tube. So we did go ahead and disconnect our bulk connector right here. We lifted up our coolant lines and we're getting our bracket up and installed here. get the bracket lined up and go ahead and get our two screws installed on the intake manifold. Install our second screw on the back of the bracket. Good, grab your connector. Press it back together. You press the gray connector forward and push the red lock tab forward. And press that down and lock that into place. You're going to install the two nuts on the bracket right here. And one right beside it. Let's go ahead and snug those down. Once you get these snugged down, you can go in through the wheel well and get the two lower 10 millimeter nuts installed there as well. 